Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund, and in this video, we're going to talk about Brian Johnson again. So this is this uh, CEO who uh, created his own anti-aging uh, protocol called the Blueprint that he's been following for nine months now. And uh, I also made a video about him two two months ago in January, where I you know go, went through his initial routine, and you can check it out. But uh, now he uh, basically published this recent blog post where he uh, reveals his uh, results after nine months of following this uh, particular uh, blueprint. And we're going to talk about the uh, results that he's got and uh, yeah, just give my additional uh, comments on it. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it. You should definitely watch the first part as well where uh, I basically go through his daily routine in, in a video that he made. But yeah, it's like a plant-based vegan um, intermittent fasting calorie-restricted uh, diet. And this again is one of the uh, transformation that he's gone through. Uh, this was in 2017 and 2021 uh, right now. And obviously he has, you know, he wasn't obese <laughs> before that, uh, but he has lost a little bit of weight and um, yeah, maybe he looks a bit more uh, younger. Feel how soft my skin is. All right, so let's check out his uh, results after nine months of following this uh, blueprint. And he has made this uh, graph basically here or a table. Uh, his chronological age is 44, and but his biological age apparently is uh, much uh, lower. In the previous video that I made, his uh, biological age was uh, five years uh, younger. And uh, as you can see, he's also used these different markers to assess the biological age of his uh, current situation after nine months and when he began initially. So NAD levels, NAD is important for aging. Uh, you do see a reduction in NAD levels when you get older and uh, basically those adults or elderly who are healthier they also have higher energy levels uh, so there is some uh, association between there and things like calorie restriction does increase energy as well so exercises as a healthy lifestyle increases energy levels and uh, his result has um, it's it's uh, actually you know result re decreased from the biological age of 42 to 16 so he has the NAD levels of a 16 year old <laughs> which is quite nice um, because you know when you're 16 you do have like a ton of energy and uh, you're able to do a lot of things so 26 years younger are his NAD levels mm, um, and um, yeah he also does take a nicotinamide riboside which we discussed in the previous video which is an NAD booster but a lot of the you know things that raise NAD levels are you know calorie restriction fasting uh, not overeating not being inflamed exercising and sleep and circadian rhythm optimization also raise NAD and I would argue that those are actually more, much more powerful uh, for uh, raising the NAD levels. I don't know what his uh, nicotinamide riboside dosage is right now but uh, previously he took, if I'm not mistaken, he took um, a few hundred milligrams the last time. Um, so I think yeah the NAD boosters do help but the most biggest factor for uh, improving your NAD levels come from the uh, the uh, circadian side, exercise, calorie restriction, and intermittent fasting, because those uh, activities govern the recycling of NAD. So even if you take the NAD boosters, but your recycling pathways are offline, then you're not going to have like a sustained level of elevation of uh, the NAD levels. Uh, so that's why like the uh, yeah the foundations are most important for NAD levels, and the boosters can be like a good uh, thing. Heart health if i'm not mistaken uh, then uh, maximum heart rate he had the heart rate of a 60 year old but now it's 37 which is good 23 years younger uh, white blood cell initially he had the white blood cell age of 54 and now it's 33 funny enough like you know fasting and exercise and saunas those uh, all improve the heart rate as well as the white blood cell basically function uh, heart HRV, heart rate variability, same trend from the age of 55 to the age of 39. So things that boost HRV, saunas, cold, exercise, fasting, not overeating, not being stressed out, basically those kind of things. Uh, skin age went from the age of 40 to the age of 28, 12 years younger. <laughs> I don't know how you like, assess the skin age. Um, but yeah, oral health gums from the age of 40 to the age of 35, five years younger, nice. Uh, epigenetics multi-clock average so 40 from 47 to 43 a reduction which is good inflammation from the age of 14 to the age of 10 so he already had <laughs> inflammation levels 
in of a 14 year old and now it's uh, basically 10 a fitness score from 20 to 18 and epigenetics remain the same 18 so that's the result winning uh, snaps of he, he also took some sort of uh, like a colon test so he swallowed this pill that traveled through his intestinal tract and took 33,000 images of his intestinal tract and they found no lymphoma no Crohn's no cancer uh, polyps or anything mm -hmm, which is obviously good to know I would imagine like most people <laughs> wouldn't be able to take this kind of a test uh, but still okay da -da -da. this is NAD increased from 26 micromoles to 36 so 10 micromole increase dosing based upon measurement with nicotine riboside heart input includes max heart rate improved from 169 to 183 we have only done one echocardiogram so that's a good improvement as well in the cardiovascular fitness HRV raised from 37 to 54 with the whoop uh, I don't use the whoop I have the o-ring uh, which also measures HRV um, well, the HRV, yeah, like, um, is a very, like, subjective thing. Like, some people ha get, like, different numbers. I personally have a HRV with the O ring. I have, like, 100. <laughs> my 100 is my average. And the maximum, if I, like, re really recovered and rested, then I get, like, 150, 180 sometimes. Uh, so I don't know, like, you know, I haven't used the whoop. So I can't tell you, like, what is the difference between them. Maybe they have, like, a different system. But, um, yeah, most important thing is to just pay attention to the trend. Of is your HRV improving or uh, is it getting worse and then base your like uh, decisions upon that inflammation so high sensitive CRP 0 0.80 to 0 0.18 80 uh, percent reduction which is pretty huge like he already had pretty low inflammation 0 0.80 is not it's not you know unhealthy necessarily um, but going to 0 0.18 is pretty good like Pretty substantial reduction, 80% reduction uh, over the course of nine months. And what are the best things to lower CRP? I think fasting, <laughs> calorie restriction, exercise, uh, the diet obviously plays a huge part. He doesn't eat any like you know processed food or let's say ultra processed food. He eats pretty uh, like just you know plant-based uh, vegan diet, and uh, those are foods generally very anti-inflammatory as well. Um, so that's a good thing. My own personal HRV or not HRV CRP. Is 0 0.1 as well uh, but I do eat like meat like that's the main difference between my diet and his would be that I still eat like substantial amount of meat and my protein intake is like you know maybe two times uh, bigger than his <laughs> uh, I don't restrict carbs either I do time restricted eating uh, I eat mostly once a day I do exercise a lot and um, yeah maybe like maybe it kind of for me it proves that I can get away with almost anything because of doing one meal a day. That's what my own personal opinion. <laughs> like even I can eat like a pretty suboptimal diet and I can still maintain an inflammation level of uh, 0 0.1 and HRV of, you know, 100 and uh, <laughs> and uh, a lower biological age of uh, nine years younger, even though I would be, I could eat, let's say, not so healthy food sometimes or something like that. Uh, and that's mostly because of obviously calorie restriction. I'm still maintaining calorie restriction, uh, but I'm also doing one meal a day. I'm having my sleep optimized and circadian rhythms optimized and uh, those kind of things. Uh, but yeah, just that's just my own comments about my own experience uh, with this. Obviously, I don't know yet. Like I haven't done this uh, thorough assessment of my biological age as he has and other people. Uh, but yeah, just that's what what I noticed uh, myself. Disappointed. Overall, I think it's you know very awesome to see someone doing so thorough self quantification and tracking everything and actually sharing it with uh, the world. Um, he does basically follow almost like the optimal lifestyle in terms of anti-aging, I agree, like uh, time restricted eating, calorie restriction, exercise, more like a plant-based intake I think is more beneficial for reducing the biological age and the markers of that and uh, yeah it's interesting to see okay he has done it for nine months, how, <laughs> how low can he go or what's the end result, uh, how uh, far can he take this, maybe he can you know reach the biological age of you know 20 or something uh, and uh, more so like what's more interesting would be like how long can he maintain it like even uh, let's say he plateaus at the biological age of 30 how long could he maintain it while his chronological age goes up so can he still maintain the biological age of 30 while being chronologically 50 years old uh, that would be interesting to see but uh, yeah definitely check out the first video that I made where he goes through his uh, 
daily routine and uh, basically food intake and supplements and those kind of things, I'll give my comments in that video as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.